guys. How you doing? How are you, my friends? Welcome, welcome. It's Thursday, unless you're watching this on YouTube, and it might be Friday. It could be Saturday. Who knows? <laughs> I don't know what is going on with YouTube right now, you guys, but all of these videos, all of the Facebook Lives that I do here, they get uploaded over to YouTube when they are finished. And Joan and I have just recently discovered that YouTube is taking longer than normal uh, for videos to be uploaded. Like it's crazy how long it takes for those videos to get over there. So for all of you who are joining us on YouTube, who will be watching this on the replay later, we are getting these videos up there as fast as we possibly can. But my gosh, YouTube, it just has a mind of its own. It's very much like Facebook, which also seems to have a mind of its own. <laughs> hi, guys. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Suzanne. Hi, Barb. So good to see you guys. Good morning. Happy Thursday. Indeed. Indeed. Hi, Roberta. I'm so glad to see you guys. Hi, Nastasia. So, guys, I'll go ahead and warn you ahead of time. The weather here is pretty nasty. Like, we've had lots of uh, thunder and rain and wind. So, um, I'm just, I'm going to keep my fingers crossed for good internet connection. You guys be thinking happy internet thoughts because we definitely have a lot of thunderstorms in the area. Joan just posted that. Thunderstorms rolling through. So, if we lose connection, just know that I will try to get back as fast as I possibly can. Hopefully, we won't have any issues. It's kind of quiet here at the moment, but there was some major thunder rolling through here earlier. So, hi. Hi to everybody. Hi, Kay. I'm so happy to see all of you. So, a couple of things before we get started with today's project is, oh, thank you, Wendy. I thank you so, so much for that. I changed my earrings like six times before the show. I was like, I don't know what to wear today. <laughs> I figure I always wear a gray t-shirt or a black t-shirt for the most part. The earrings are always the most like interesting part of my clothing. <laughs> <coughs> Thank you. By the way, these will be going into the Etsy shop tomorrow. Are they not fabulous? That black and yellow bead here in the middle, that's a lamp work bead. And then that bumblebee is a check glass bead. Mm, yeah, if you want these, they're going in the shop. They'll be there tomorrow. So let's do a little bit of housekeeping before we get started with today's project. I'm really excited to get to this project. We've done it before, but I want to show it to you again because we have so many new people here. And this one is so much fun once you get the hang of it, right? It's one of those where it does take a little bit of practice, but I have complete faith in you. So let's, let's do the housekeeping. The housekeeping is, guys, for those of you who are joining me on, on YouTube and see these after they happen as lives, I encourage you to come on over to Facebook, click the like on the Sarah Ellis Designs Facebook business page, and join our Sarah Ellis Designs community. You don't have to post on there if you don't want to. You can just be a total lurker. <laughs> Okay, um, but it's a great place for inspiration if you're looking for, um, you know, inspiration, like if maybe you have creative blog, like everybody posts the most amazing designs there. And I'm always in awe, so inspired by everything. And then not only that, but we have a great community. Everybody there is so friendly and helpful and kind to each other. So if you want to come and be a part of our family, we want you to come. Just make sure that when you do that, you fill out and answer the questions to get into the group. That's super important. That lets us know that you are not a potential spammer or a robot. So definitely do that. Come on over. We um, we do Facebook Lives on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays at 1 p.m. Eastern time. My virtual Michaels classes, that schedule is always different, but we try to post ahead of time so that you guys know when and where those are going to be happening. But you can always count on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. In fact, tomorrow is Feel Good Friday, and I am really looking forward to that. We've got some fun, fun jewelry, easy stuff. Fridays, Feel Good Fridays is always easy jewelry. So more than anything, just welcome to all of our new people. We have grown in leaps and bounds over the past few weeks. So hello and welcome all of you. Please come and join our group. Sign up for the text messages if you have not done that. And um, yeah, I won't spam you. I promise. I won't spam you. <laughs> before before the live today, I actually got a, I got a message from Pamela. Pamela, if you're watching, hi. <laughs> And Pamela said, Sarah, you are corny, but in the best way. And I was like, oh, no, I don't want to be corny. But you know what? I'm going to embrace it. It's okay. I am corny. I giggle a lot. We do a lot of shenanigans around here, whether it's snack shenanigans or just shenanigans in general. 
I am like the king of the dad joke. I laugh at myself, right? I totally am corny and I'm going to embrace it. And the reason is because when I was in high school, like in my younger years, I did this whole like, I'm a badass rock star, not a rock star, but you know what I mean? Like that attitude, like, don't talk to me. I'm so cool. Like I really was kind of that girl in high school. Like I had friends, but like, I was super selective and like they had to be super cool people. Like I thought I was wonderful. <laughs> and I, you know, you grow out of that. Like you catch so many more flies with honey by just being authentic and being yourself. And I'm not like people were intimidated by me when I was younger. I'm not intimidating. Like I, I'm totally just a dork. That's just the way it is. So what you see is what you get with me. And if it's corny, I'll take it. <laughs> right? It's okay. It's all right. My weird little light shines bright. All right. So <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. You guys would not have recognized me in high school. I was a bird of a different color. <laughs> Horse, bird. See? Corny. That's what you get with me. So today's project, you guys, I am obsessed with this wire wrapping technique. We've done it. I've done it for a while now because it is one of my favorites. It's been a while since we've done it here. Um, but I want to show it to you. It looks a little complicated if you're a beginner, but it's not. And that's the best part is that it's really not like you can figure this out and you'll be able to do this easy peasy and you're going to like, wow, all of your friends, they're going to be like, whoa, how did you do that? It's all about the tool. You guys, it's all about my favorite tool in the whole world. And that is the step to bell making pliers. This one has um, six different mandrel sizes on it. So you can make six different sizes of loops. This is a beetle on tool. I don't know if it's in stock at the moment. Probably should have checked that before. Um, but it is one of my favorites. So if you want to grab one of these, I highly recommend. Like it's not a need per se, but it's definitely like if you've bought all the other tools and you still need this one, get this one. Okay, it's not complicated, I promise. I can't wait to show you. Let's get turned around. Let's get turned around. All right. So let me show you. This, this one technique is so versatile. There are so many different things you can do with this. Lots and lots of fun. And move some of this stuff out of the way here. So this is what we're going to be making. We're going to be making the earrings, okay? And I've already got two made, but we're, we're going to recreate. So we're doing this with some 20 gauge wire. I'm going to be using German style wire, but I got to tell you, this is one of those projects that you can do with artistic wire, and it might actually be easier for you to do it with the artistic wire. So um, use whatever you got is basically what I'm saying. If you've only got, you know, copper core, artistic wire or dead soft wire go for it okay don't don't shy away from this I'm using 20 gauge because that's the best gauge to practice with but once you get good at this you can do this with any gauge that you want to we're going to be creating the earring but you can take the exact same technique and make a bracelet with it right which is super super cool not only that but you see the spaces in between here you can actually thread beads in between these spaces. Everywhere I'm sticking my fingernail, you can put a bead in between there. So there is so much versatility. You don't have to do this exact pattern. Once you get this pattern, start playing around with it and see what else you come up with, okay? It's going to be easy. It does take a little practice in the beginning, but I think once you figure it out, you're going to be flying with this one. The only thing, though, is that it does take a lot of wire. So keep that in mind. It takes a lot because we're doing a lot of wraps. Okay, let me move you guys down just a little bit. This tripod has been doing nothing but giving me trouble these days. I'm going to see if I can adjust you that way. Yes, much better. Okay, thank you for playing along, tripod. Awesome, yay, so much better. Now I have room <laughs> and we have bright light. Okay, so let's get started. This is gonna happen in a couple of different pieces. You may not actually notice this at first, but what we have here is all of our, our spirals are created with one piece of wire. There's a second piece of wire that is running through to create our shape. And then our bead is wrapped on with a piece of 24 gauge wire. So there are three different things going on here, but we're gonna start with just this spiral part, okay? So 
grab your bell making, your stepped bell making pliers. If you do not have stepped bell making pliers, if you have the small bell making pliers, they will work as well. OK, um, if you don't have that, just anything that you can use, like a wooden dowel, um, a, a skewer for barbecue, like I've done this with all kinds of things. OK, so don't get discouraged if you don't have this tool. The only thing is you can't really do this on your round nose pliers because your round nose pliers are tapered. That's why I definitely recommend something that is the same, you know, it's the same size all the way down. OK. All right, so let me grab my 20 gauge wire. You're going to need a lot. And I'm talking like I would go probably about 50 inches of this just to be on the safe side because it really does take a lot of wire. That's no joke. Let me measure off to the side here. So I need to be sure that I have, I have plenty. You can actually do this by working off of the spool as well if that helps. Um, it, you just kind of have to constantly be working against the spool. So that's, you know, that can be tricky in itself, but if you're comfortable doing that, then totally go for it. Okay. So let me show you what it looks like when we get started. It just looks like this. It's when we shape it and fill it with other wire to get the shapes, that's what's going to give it that teardrop shape. And I'm using the small mandrel, okay? You can use the next one up if you want to, but I'm using the smallest mandrel, which is gonna give me about a two to three millimeter loop, okay? I believe that's a three millimeter loop when it's all said and done, but the interior of that is only two millimeter. So what you wanna do is, you guys are just gonna be watching the same thing over and over again, so just be prepared. What you want, is to get your wire started. So we're gonna hold the wire between those top two barrels, okay? And I've got it kind of in the middle. You can see it's towards the middle. And I want to roll around those pliers three times. And guys, the first three may not look very good. The first six of these might not look very good. That's okay. Okay, the first ones are always a little wonky and I tend to cut them off of the design. Okay, so I've wrapped around three times. When I've come back around for that third wrap, I didn't go all the way around. I've stopped when I have come over the top of the barrel of the pliers. Okay, now I'm going to wiggle this off of the pliers. Okay, and I'm going to place that those three coils that we just made right up against the barrel of the pliers, okay? With it running through, okay? And then I'm going to wrap around the pliers again, three times. And when I go this time, I gotta open wide to pass over the coils. And again, when you come up for the third, you wanna stop, okay? Guys, you're gonna to get to see this a lot. So if you don't get it at first, it's okay. It's all right. Then wiggle it off of the tool. You got your first two already. To make the third one, okay, I take my tool, I'm going behind that wire and I try to wiggle the barrel of the pliers back in to these first loops. Okay, now you want to do your coils again. So one around, open wide to get the, these guys through, two around, opening wide, and three. And when you come up for the third one, you're going to stop. You're going to wiggle off of the pliers. Take your pliers put them into the last loops, not the last ones that you made, which are these, but the ones previous to the last set you just rolled. Wiggle your pliers into those and wrap again. Go around three times. And I'm just turning the tool, not the wire. That makes a big difference, okay? Don't try to wrap your wire around your tool. You're gonna end up just really, really frustrated with this, okay? I'm gonna take that out. And now I want to insert the pliers behind the wire 
into not the last loops, but the previous to the last loops or last coils. Okay, around and stop when you come to, th to that third. Okay, now I'm gonna sit this to the side and we're gonna pick back up with this. But what I want is I wanna show you how to start this again, okay? I want to really, really walk through this nice and slow a couple of times so that everybody gets it. I don't want to just sit here and start winding up and work out the length until I feel like I've really kind of explained this in a way that everybody understands. So I'm going to sit this piece to the side. This is going to be the piece for our earring. We will finish it, but I'm going to start from the very beginning one more time with a shorter piece of wire so we can kind of talk through this. So if you've got questions, Now's the time to ask those questions, okay? I'll be, I'll be keeping an eye. If I don't see it, use your capitals <laughs> and I will see. Okay, so with your piece of wire, okay, we're just gonna pretend like we're starting fresh, okay? Small barrel of the pliers. Truthfully, you can do this on any size you want to, okay? I'm just doing the small. Um. Let's see, Stacy's asking, can you also demo, demo how you do it with the special bell pliers? Special bell pliers? You mean the small, the small bell pliers? I can grab those. I'll do that here in just a second. It's exactly the same, but yes, yes, yes. Okay, so you're gonna do it exactly the same way, but yeah, it'll probably help for everybody to see that. So yeah, that's a good question. Um, starting out, okay, the first few may look terrible. You may have to cut those off. It's fine, it's fine. You just wanna get into a rhythm, okay? You're gonna place the wire between the barrel of your pliers and then turn the tool. Don't turn the wire, turn the, the tool three times around. So there was one and I know it's one because I can see that cut of the wire at the end, okay? And then two and again, I've stopped right at the cut in the wire and I'm gonna go around again. There's three okay so I've gone around three times and the wire is coming over the top of the barrels out towards my body okay I'm gonna wiggle my tool out okay so we have three coils I'm going to place those first coils it's a little tricky here I'm gonna place those coils that want the wire back into the pliers, the coils are laying right up against the tool. Okay, notice that placement. There's no space in between there. It's right up against, okay? And I'm gonna roll the tool once. And I gotta open wide to clear the coils that we already made, okay? There was my twice. I'm gonna go again this time, open wide to get those coils through and stop at three, okay? That wire is coming straight down at me. Now, I'm gonna take it off of the tool, and you do have to wiggle, because if you're coiling nice and tight, it's gonna, you know, you gotta, you gotta really kinda wiggle it off of the tool. Now, the pattern is down, up, down, up, down, up, right? That's what it, it ends up looking like, kind of like a zipper or a stair step, right? So now I need to make a down section, which is this first section that we made, right? So I want to take my pliers, I want to go behind that wire and back into those first loops that we made. That just helps me to position my coils in the right place. That's why we do that, okay? Close and wrap three times opening wide to get those coils through. There's three, okay? Wiggle off of the tool. Now we wanna do, we've got two up and we've got a down. We're ready to do a down this time. So the wire goes behind, or I'm sorry, the tool goes behind the wire, wiggle the pliers into the previous to the last loops, right? So not the ones you just did, but the ones right before that. Wiggle your tool into there. And then turn your tool to make three. 
Okay. And you just keep on going that way. Slide in, do your, your three, straighten out your wire, take it off of the tool. You go into the previous loops, not the ones you just did, but the ones right before those, and keep going. So that's all there is to this. And I know I say that like it's no big deal. I'll be completely honest with you. It does take a little practice, but you totally can do this. You absolutely can do this, whether you've got artistic wire, whether you've got German style wire, whether you have the stepped bell making pliers or the regular bell making pliers, like you can do this. It just takes a minute to like kind of figure out the feeling of it. And then once you get into that rhythm, it works up kind of quick. Okay, so the length part of this, you'll work that up pretty quickly. Once you get that down, then you can start really playing around with it. You can do three wraps and two wraps, three wraps, five wraps. Like you can, you can at that point, once you've done three and three and kind of mastered that, you can um, play around and turn this into whatever design you want it to be, right? You don't have to do um, just exactly what I'm showing you. In fact, let me show you just a little... A, a little something extra. So I'm going to do my next three in line here. Let's see. I'll do three. And then instead of going, what if instead of going down, I went, wait a minute. Instead of going <laughs> now I'm forgetting what I was doing. Oh, goodness. So you can do it so that you have three. It's three up. I can't remember how how I did that. So instead, oh, let's go around one more time. That'll help. You don't have to go in the same line is what I'm saying. So look. You can be going along down, up, down, up, down, up, and then up, right? And then come back down. And you can go up as many as you want to and then down as many as you want to. Like you, you don't have to just do up and down, up and down. It's really fun. I, I promise. It's a fun one. It's a fun one just to kind of like just get the hang of the tool and just sit and kind of mindlessly wind around and see what fun things you can come up with. For me, this is a gateway drug as far as wire wrapping is concerned to free form. Like if you can get comfortable playing around with this technique, then you're going to really be more confident when you go to um, just kind of creating your own free form pieces with wire. Okay. All right, let me grab the small bell making pliers and I'll show it to you on that and then we'll actually finish our earrings, okay? So, I have just the standard small bell making pliers and the only difference here is that that small barrel is a little bigger. It's closer to this guy, right? So it is gonna be a little bit bigger on the wire, but you can do it in the same way, okay? So we would treat this, this exactly the same. So you start with your wire in between there. You're gonna wrap around three times. And again, I'm doing the tool, not the wire. That's much easier for me, okay? And when I get to the three, I stop, okay? Slide it off. Whoops. Place it just like we do on the step to bell making pliers with those three right up against the, the pliers, okay, around three and stop. Okay, putting the pliers back in the previous, not the ones we just made, but the ones before those to help the placement of the next set of coils, right? It's really helpful to have that because that's gonna keep all of your coils nice and straight. Yes, Wendy, this is gonna work perfectly with any gauge wire you wanna use. I'm just using the 20 gauge to start with because it's a really good wire to practice with. Um, but once you get the hang of it, you can do this with any gauge you want to. Okay, 
So we just keep going. So if you've got just the regular small bell making pliers and not the stepped bell making pliers, you're still going to be able to do this. If you've just got a wooden dowel, you're still going to be able to do this. Okay. I don't want anybody to think, um, you know, that just because you don't have the, the tool that you can't do it because you totally can use what you've got around you. Right. Even a paintbrush handle will work for this. Like you literally can do this with anything. That's what it kind of looks like when you're looking through it. You've got two holes running side by side all the way down. Okay, so let's go back to the piece that we were working on for our earring because we, are, we absolutely are creating a project. So at this point, we're just going to do a lot of repetition, okay? And <clears throat> if you've got questions, let them fly. In the meantime, I'm just going to be kind of working up the length, okay? And just remember, it takes, it takes a lot of wire to to get a long portion of this pattern down okay so I'm just doing three and then wiggling back in and three I like to straighten out my wire as I go And sometimes when you go to wiggle your pliers back into that bottom row of spirals, sometimes they won't, it won't fit. It's okay just as long as you get right up next to it, okay? Just do the very best that you can to get right up next to it, even if your pliers won't go in. Sometimes that happens and a lot of it has to do with pulling a little too hard when you're wiggling the wire off of the tool. <laughs> I have a tendency to do that. Okay. You know, it'll close up. It's like I'm pulling, I'm pulling my loop shut for some reason. Okay. Yes, Catherine, this is a really good one. Somebody had asked me about that earlier today. Um, about, she said she had some wire, but it wasn't the best wire. And I told her this is, you know, Use your scrap wire. Use your little scrap pieces. If you've got wire that's tarnished and you don't want to use it for jewelry making, that's okay. Use it for your practice stuff, right? Don't toss, don't toss your wire just because it's, um, you know, too short. What have I done? <laughs> I was talking and not paying attention. Um, you know, save all your little pieces for practicing things like this before you use your good stuff, you know, to make your jewelry pieces with. I try to save as much of my wire as I can. The little tiny pieces, I get rid of those after a while just because I end up with so many of them. But I like to use my scraps for practice. And tarnished. Tarnished wire I use for practice as well. At least I get good life out of it, you know? I hate to just throw stuff away. <laughs> That's the hoarder in me. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to keep going. Okay. And it's not perfect. And it's okay if it's not perfect. Like if your little spirals are, you know, they're kind of going every which way, that's okay. Because once we run another piece of wire through this, it'll straighten them all back out. So I don't want you to be too concerned in the beginning about the placement of the coils more than I want you to be concerned with just the pattern itself. I feel like that part, um, you know, that that's the most easy part, right? The rest of it just kind of comes with trial and error. Get the pattern part down and then worry about whether or not they're all in line. Like that, that stuff can all come secondary. Yes, being practical. I like that. That's my, that's going to be my new motto. I'm not a hoarder. I'm just practical. <laughs> I like it. Okay. So, just wiggling in there. I think the part of this that takes the most time after you get it down is just wiggling it off of the tool and then putting your pliers back in. If that part was a little quicker, <laughs> then this would go really, really fast. And again, if you're more comfortable working off, you know, with the spool instead of, um, you know, cutting a piece because you don't know how long of this you want. I definitely can, I, I can definitely get behind doing that. 
that way you don't really waste you don't waste any just know it does it takes a lot it takes a lot <laughs> Kindle I love it I love it <laughs> oh gosh And you'll notice, see with that one, I didn't get my tool back in, but I just placed it as close as I could get it, right? So just know, like, I, even I don't, I don't get it perfect every single time. I just get it close, like hand grenades. <laughs> that's, that's awful. Oh my gosh. Told ya. I am the queen of the dad joke. I embrace my dorkiness. It's all good. Look at how I hold my tool. Is that not weird? Who else holds their tool like this? Anybody? Like some people hold it like this, but for whatever reason, I curl my first two fingers inside. Does anybody else do that? I'm just curious. It makes my hands hurt after a while. I have to reposition. But... I don't know why I do that. Anybody else out there? It's okay if it's going every direction. It's totally okay if it's going every direction. That's what it's going to do in the beginning until you get the hang of it. And that's all right. Just don't, just don't stop. Don't get discouraged and decide that you can't do it. Because I promise you totally can do this. And once you can get this part down... It becomes so much fun to figure out, okay, now what's next? What can I do next with this fun technique? So you totally can do this, I promise. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Guys, you can message me on Facebook. You can send me, um, if you're part of our texting community, you know, if you've, if you've signed up to re receive text messages, you can send me a text message question. I don't see those immediately, but I try to check it several times a day. So if you've got questions, that's a really good place to ask me too. And it doesn't cost anything. Um, so I definitely recommend signing up for that. I won't spam you. But if you've got questions, that's a good place to ask. And you can send me pictures, too. So if you want to, like, send me a picture of what you're working on, then I can better help you. It's just a cool thing to have. I, I'm really excited that we added that to our, our communications, if you will. And Facebook, you know. Facebook works just like anything else. And YouTube comments, guys, I'm terrible about responding to YouTube comments. If you've asked me a question on YouTube and you have not heard back from me, like, spam me. I deserve the spam after that point. <laughs> Get my attention because I want to be able to help you. <laughs> Don't stab yourself with your fork, okay? All right, so I'm just I'm just gonna keep going, okay? And I'm actually gonna bring over a pair of the earrings because I don't have an exact measurement, but we're gonna be able to kind of, whoops, ringing the bell. We're gonna be able to get kind of a good idea of how, how far we need to go. So I'm just gonna lay this on top of one of the earrings that's already been made. Maybe if I can hold it still. And just lay it over the top. I think we're pretty close. Yep, so I only need to do two more sections, okay? So I'm gonna put this back onto the tool. And do, there was one, I'm gonna do one more. Okay, so I've got enough of the length here. I know it doesn't look like very much. It's a lot of wire, but it doesn't look like a lot. Let's see. Um, let's see. So we've done about a little over three inches. 
Okay. So if you're going to recreate this exact earring, a little over three inches is what you're going to need. Um, but you can, you can do this your own way, right? Okay, I'm going to trim, and then we're going to put the earring together. And then if you guys need to see me starting this over again, I, I will do another little section of this, okay? I just want to be sure that everybody gets it. I'm going to come in with my cutter tool, trim off. Okay, that's what we've got. Now what I want to do to make this into a form, because this at this point, it it's just kind of wiggly and wobbly and it doesn't really want to do anything. I've got to run something through the core of this. I'm going to run another piece of 20 gauge wire through this. However, you'll run whatever you want to through it. If you want to put anything that'll fit through there, bead stringy wire, um, a thicker gauge artistic wire, German style wire, um, leather cord, anything you want to run through that's going to fit and then kind of tie it to make your shape is gonna work, okay? I'm just gonna use another piece of the 20 gauge wire because that's what I've got. And so let me cut that, okay? And I'm gonna run this wire through the inner, the inner loop, not the out, or the inner coils, not the outer coils, okay? So I've got my piece of wire and all I wanna do is just run through with my wire. Now again, remember when I told you at the beginning you could add beads to this, this is when you would do that. So if you wanted to run your wire through and add a bead in between each one, a little seed bead, or if you were doing a larger coil, you'd have a larger gap, you could add a larger bead right in between there so that a pretty little bead would sit between each one of the coils and then you can do the same thing with the bottom as well all right i'm going to take my wires bring them up together to form my teardrop shape okay and i'm going to treat these just like i am wire wrapping a briolette so i've got the two wires crossing okay and let's see, I need my pliers. Uh-oh, I feel like I've, whoa, so many. Yes, Noelle, I'm using round wire. I'm using 20 gauge. I missed a lot of comments, you guys. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Okay, so I've got my two wires crisscrossing and it is kind of springy, so I'm gonna hold it together as much as I can. I'm gonna take one of the wires and kind of twist it to the back for just a second. That's really going to help to hold it in place, right? Just for a second. Now I'm going to take the other wire, bend it straight up and down. Okay. Now the wire that I bent to the back, I'm going to use it to wire wrap around the straight wire about three times. And you can come in with your pliers and kind of straighten all that up if you want to. Okay, I'm going to come back here, trim this off. Okay, and now I'm going to open this up because I want it to be a little bit wider. Okay, so that's the shape that I want. And as far as my loop is concerned here, I'm just gonna fake it. I'm gonna do a simple loop because I already have the wire wraps. It's gonna look like a wrapped loop, but it's really not. So I'm gonna bend that wire right over the top of those wraps and I'm gonna trim off the wire. I'm gonna leave myself, you know, fourth of an inch, something like that, okay? And now I'm gonna use my round nose pliers, grab the tip of that wire and roll it back towards the wraps. And we have faked a wrapped loop. Ooh, that one's not very pretty. My apologies, that is one ugly little loop. <laughs> but it serves its purpose, right? Once you put an ear wire on that, it's all good. It's all good. Okay, so the basic structure is done. But what we want to do is we want to make it really pretty and add a bead to it. I mean, you don't have to add a bead if you don't want to. But I like to add the bead to the center of it. I just like it gives it a nice little pop of color. And I am such a huge fan of turquoise and silver together. So I, um, I want to add a bead. Notice, though, my bead is drilled side to side across the top. 
I'm going to use a piece of 24 gauge wire to wire wrap this. Just cut yourself a little bit. Doesn't have to be a lot. Go ahead and thread your bead onto your wire. And then you want to figure out where you want that bead to hang. That's going to kind of help to determine where you want to wire wrap this. So with the pair that I've already made, I went down about three of the coils. Doesn't have to be exact, exactly the same though. Okay, so I'm just kind of looking at the placement and then I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take the bead off, okay? It's much easier to wire wrap in this tiny little space without the bead for the first time. So what I want is I wanna wire wrap between these two, sorry. I wanna be sure you guys can see that. So I just picked, see these, this open space right here. I wanna take the tail end of my 24 gauge wire and stick it through there to come out towards the back, okay? I'm gonna wire wrap around the 20 gauge wire that's actually the core that's keeping the shape, okay? So I'm not wrapping onto the coils at all. I'm wire wrapping around the 20 gauge that's running through there and I'm just, going very carefully through that little open space. Now here's the thing, it's a little tricky, it's hard to get in there, the wire wraps don't have to be perfect. You know why? Nobody will ever see them. No one will ever see them. Just get that wire wrapped around that 20 gauge wire two, three times max, and you're good to go. Like nobody's gonna see this. That's why I use the 24 gauge wire for this because it, it disappears against the 20 gauge and nobody will ever, I, these, these cutters, you guys, these cutters are going to the trash. I'm done with those. <laughs> Let me grab my good pair. I don't know why I had hold, been holding on to those. All right. So I wire wrapped in there. You can see it's in there. It's not a pretty wrap. It's a messy wrap. Nobody's ever going to see it. <laughs> More than anything, I just wanna get that wire anchored. So now I'm gonna thread my bead on, okay? And I'm gonna come across to the other side, okay? And I'm gonna do the same thing. See where that wire is laying between those two coils? That's where I'm gonna take my wire, I'm gonna stick it through there. It's going over the top of that 20 gauge wire, okay? And then I'm just going to very carefully make sure that I get a good wrap in there. At least two, doesn't have to be perfect. All you want is that bead to be secured. Don't get hung up on the, on the look of it. You do have to make the wire do what you want it to do though. And it wants to coil up and kink and be fussy with me, but. Okay, I'm gonna try to get through there one more time. It's a tight squeeze. If you wanna do this without the bead the first time you do it, that's fine. It's just tricky to get in there. You know what, I don't even think I have enough room to mess with that. So I've got it, I got it wrapped in there twice. That's gonna be good enough for me, I'm gonna trim off. Okay. Now, I've got my bead hanging in the middle, right? And that 24 gauge wire, I can, I can make it, I can make it come down into more of a U shape. Yes, be the boss of the wire. <laughs> all right, so now all we have to do to this is just add our ear wire and the earring is done. That part just kind of filling up and creating the shape. And you don't have to do a teardrop shape at all. You can do, um, you know, you can do a circle. You can do any shape that you want. You could wind this around, you know, you could bend this around anything and just fill it up with a good sturdy wire on the inside. So as far as your outer wire is concerned for your coils, I definitely recommend doing the 20 gauge to start with. 
before you practice with some 22 gauge or whatever gauge it is that you're wanting, you know, to make your coils with. However, when it comes to the wire that you're going to use on the inside, or if you're going to use, you know, some sort of stringing material, with your stringing material, it doesn't make much of a difference. But when it does come to using a hard wire, like the German style wire or the artistic wire, I wouldn't go any smaller than 22 gauge. Okay, if you put 24 gauge as your inside wire to hold the shape, it's really going to be very, very flimsy. I don't think it's going to, um, I don't think it's going to be strong enough to hold whatever shape you're trying to make. So I definitely recommend going with at least a 22 gauge for that core, right? But other than that, you can change this up and do this however you want to. And show you what a pair of them look like finished and I'll try them on for you here in just a second and then just to show you I was playing around because I was like oh I want to make a set I want to make a set so I was like oh I'll just wire up some more of these little teardrops so I just I just wire wrapped the teardrops and put them together with some 20 or I'm sorry some four millimeter jump rings and a piece of chain and voila I've got a little set already how cute is that right it still lets the earrings be the star because they have the most going on, but like I still have, I still have a matching little necklace. Needs some more chain, but I thought it was cute. <laughs> Just little inspiration ideas, right? Thank you, Maggie. So I'm going to turn you guys around and show you what they look like on. And if you've got any questions that I can answer before we go, let me know. <laughs> Take these off. I love this set too, Nicole. And I'm just, I'm just such a huge fan of um, turquoise and silver together, especially this time of year. Like we're going into spring and summer, like turquoise works all spring and summer. How fun are those? Yes, yes, yes. Love, love them. They're so fun. <laughs> you guys can do this. You can do this. You've got this. Don't expect if you've never done this before to get it on the first try. Please don't. Please be kind to yourself and give yourself grace. It takes a little bit of practice, but you're gonna get it, you're gonna get it. And then it opens up a whole new world of like, ooh, what can I coil? What how? What pattern can I make? Can I add fun beads in there? You absolutely can. And the larger the wire, or the larger the amount of wraps that you do, like say if you did a section of five or six wraps, and then went up and did a section of five or six wraps, that's gonna give you a bigger space. So in between here, right, you're going to have a bigger opening, which is going to allow for a bigger bead if you want to pop a bead in between there. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was fun. So, guys, let me let you let me let me let you kind of marinate on this a little bit before we go. Um, something that um, another way to use the messenger or or the text messages or to use the Facebook messenger, Facebook. What was that? <laughs> if you want to use the Facebook, you can um, suggest project ideas to me. Or if you've got a problem, like you're stumped with a, a technique that you're working on, send me a message. Send it through the text messaging app if you want to, or just text messaging in general. It's not an app on your end. It's an app on my end. Um, or through Facebook Messenger and let me know because a lot of times those things translate really well into Facebook Live projects. I had someone ask me this morning about um, spirals, a different kind of spiral, and um, she's going to send me a picture here in a little while. I think I'm going to turn that into a project for next week. I had somebody else ask me about donuts, like the focals, the gemstone donut beads, those focals. I have some of those coming my way soon. I'm going to turn those into a project because that question gets asked a lot, like what can I do with those? So that is on the books as well. Um, so if you've got, if you're stumped with something or you just have a suggestion for a project that you'd like to see, reach out and let me know. Sometimes I have a hard time like coming up with ideas for things and I don't want to repeat things too much. Um, but if you're having a truck, if you're having trouble with a technique, then you're probably not the only one and it makes a great video. So just let me know. I'm going to scroll back because I did see there were a couple of questions. Um, oh, Myra says you want to, sh or are you going to show starting the coil again? I can. Yeah, I'll turn you guys back around here. Um, Joan says, what size are the turquoise beads? The turquoise beads are, blah, 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 where is my gauge? So the turquoise beads, the, the fattest part of them is 13 millimeters. 
So the big drop portion of them is 13 millimeters and from top to bottom, they are 18 millimeters or 19. Let's see, 18. <laughs> so from, from their big little bottoms, that's 13. From top to bottom, that's 19. Um, let me roll back, there was another question here. Um, yes, yes, yes. Susan says, I can do this. If I was able to make a tree of life and bird's nest, yeah, you can do this. You've so got this. Okay, hold on. Um, round wire was used for the entire process. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I always use round wire unless I tell you guys otherwise. Um, I could have sworn I saw one more question. Oh, how to wrap these on dowels. So if you're going to wrap it on dowels, you're going to, you're going to do the same process, but you're not going to have the tool. You're, <laughs> you're not going to have the tool to twist. So you're going to use your thumb. I'll show you. I don't have a dowel, but I can I can kind of walk you through it because somebody wanted to see the um, the project started again, like just the coil started again. So we can talk about that real quick, just really quick. And then I will let you guys go. OK, but I did say I would I would do this again. So let's do it. OK, so just to get you started one more time. OK, and don't forget, guys, all of this goes to YouTube so you can watch the replays over and over and over again as many times as you want to. But just to get you started one more time, I'll show you because it's definitely getting started is always the trickiest part. OK, so I've got my tool. I'm going to use the small mandrel. OK, my 20 gauge wire. I'm going to start at the end of the wire. I'm holding the wire between the barrel of the pliers. OK. And I'm going to roll the pliers to roll that wire. And I am rolling my coil towards my hands. Don't coil out. Coil towards your hand. That's gonna. That's a, a big part of this. And I should have said that at the beginning. I wish I had. I'm sorry for those of you who are gone already. Because we've lost some people by now. Okay. So the coils, you're going to coil towards your hand, towards the tool. Okay, so there's three. I'm going to take that off of the tool. Now for my next placement, I want to grab the wire so that the coils that I just made are sitting on the top of the barrel of the pliers. Okay, that wire is running towards me between the, between the barrel of the pliers. I'm going to go around once, open wide to go pass over the top of those coils. Okay, that's two, and that's three. And the first ones are always kind of, this one's really, I would cut it off because it's just wonky. <laughs> okay, so when I've come around for three, that wire is coming out towards me. Wiggle it off of the tool. Okay, now we need to do another down section. So this was up that we just finished. We started with down, we did up. Now we need to do another down section. So I want my tool to go behind the wire and back into the down section. That's just gonna help me to place everything in the right spot, okay? So if you wiggle your tool back through, not the ones you just made, but the ones before, and then wrap three times around, okay, and stop when your number three is coming out towards you, okay, wiggle it off of the tool, you don't want to place your, your tool back into those that you just made, but you want them, it to go in the previous ones, so, whoops, it's going behind the wire and into the second to last wraps that we made, if you can get your tool to fit in there. If you can't, just put it right up against that loop, okay? And wrap again, I'm going around three times. So if you were gonna do this with a dowel, okay, and you don't have the tool, so the tool, it helps you because you can bite down on the wire. That's really gonna help, you know, to turn the tool. With a dowel, because you don't have that, you're just working with a stick, so you don't have this open and closing motion, you're really gonna wanna come in with your thumb, okay? And 
you're probably going to find that you're going to hold the tool, you're going to hold the dowel still, okay, instead of turning the tool. You're going to hold the dowel and you're going to wrap the wire instead, right? Does that make sense? So it would, it's still going to work exactly the same way. You're going to wrap around three times, okay, and you're going to stop when you get that wire coming towards you. Whoops. <laughs> coming towards you <laughs> okay and you would place the dowel into the next okay instead of turning the tool though it's hard to show it with a tool because the tool is kind of heavy but you would hold everything with your left hand or your non-dominant hand and wrap around with your right hand which is very awkward I wish I just had a dowel here so I could show you Okay, but that's really going to be the main difference is that instead of turning, instead of turning the tool, you're just going to turn the wire, right? You're going to hold that dowel stationary because you don't have that opening and closing motion to use to guide your wire. I hope that helped. I hope that made sense. Okay, I hope. And if it didn't, you're more than welcome to reach out to me. Okay. All right, I'm going to turn you guys around again, and we will say our goodbyes for today. I hope I've helped. I really I really want to be sure that I've explained this to you in a way that makes um, good sense. So if I didn't do a good job of that and you still got questions, please don't hesitate to ask. I'm here. That's my job. That's what I do. <laughs> so you can always, always reach out to me. Um, yeah, try a pencil, says Noel. It's, you know, it might actually be beneficial if you're going to use something like a dowel to start with something a little bit larger just to get a feel for it first. And definitely use your practice wire, right? Don't, don't do it with your really good stuff. Oh, goodness. I feel like I did a lot of talking. I always do a lot of talking. <laughs> All right, that's the end. That is the end for me today, you guys. I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your afternoon. Don't forget, tomorrow is Feel Good Friday. And I have to wiggle when I say Feel Good Friday. <laughs> it's just, it has to happen that way. Which means, for those of you who are new, Feel Good Friday means that the, um, the projects are super easy, fun, not hard for your brain. Good brain candy to take into the weekend for inspiration. And I also have kits that will be available in the shop if you'd like to buy and recreate exactly the ones that I make. So that is what's up for tomorrow. In the meantime, have a wonderful afternoon and I will see you guys soon. Bye guys.